Valesky has achieved what thousands of little girls only dream of. She has reached the pinnacle of dance as a ballerina with the Joffrey Ballet. But what does a dancer of her caliber do for an encore? She yeah, teaches you know at a few fortunate elementary schools, and she does so with so much energy and authority that even the boys are discovering how great dance can be. I went to Eagle Rock Elementary, where Carol was commanding the rapt attention of fourth graders. There's something unusual happening in the auditorium at Eagle Rock Elementary. Once a week, more than 50 squirming fourth graders take the stage eager to start their favorite class. I really do look forward to it every week. It's so fun. We learn a lot of new steps every week, and Carol is so nice. Face the class. Have a look. Because the teacher is Carol Valesky, a professional dancer turned educator. And how does she get the class started? Without words. <laughs> Many times, when you don't speak, that's when children will start listening even more. They're used to being in the classroom, they're talked at all day long. And as soon as you start doing something that's, it's dramatic when you don't speak. Carol Valesky went from principal dancer with the prestigious Joffrey Ballet Company to principal teacher and founder of the California Dance Institute. She's more than a teacher, she's an energizer. Half drill sergeant, half artist, 100% dedicated. Laser arms, laser arms. Laser arms, laser arms. In the classroom, they're, they're talked, they have to be inside the box, so to speak, in the classroom. They have to sit and behave and all of that. Or they have the opportunity to go outside in the playground and explode. What I like to think of what we do is we create an explosion within the box. At a time when the arts and public schools are falling prey to budget cuts, Carol drives hundreds of miles a week, taking her love of dance with her to five elementary schools. The teachers at Eagle Rock say the impact is noticeable. I'm seeing big increases in math. I'm seeing tremendous increases in writing skills. They leave dance and they're energized and they're freer. And all of that is such a wonderful academic gift. Well, they're getting a skill. Let me try this side. Crazy hair. Five, six, here you go. Oh, I'm not sure who the winner is yet. Let me try the middle. Five, six, here you go. Crazy hair. Hmm. So far, my favorite was in that group. Let me try this group. Five, six, crazy hair, go. One, two. Now, I know she's got a lot of blonde hair, but... Carol is by nature intense. Joshua, that same intensity is what drove her to the top Cheryl. of the competitive world of dance. Probably like so many dancers, for me, I saw Fred Astaire movies and thought that that was fabulous. And I know a lot of ballerinas say, oh, they saw, you know, Swan Lake or the Sugar Plum Fairy or whatever. I saw a ballet called Rodeo, Rodeo is what it was called. It was about a cowgirl and it was in Boots, and it was a lot of theater and acting. And that was always one of my favorite ballets by Agnes DeMille. Carol won a Ford Foundation dance scholarship. At age 12, she went to New York and fell in love with the big city. Years later, she would dance the role that inspired her as a child. I got to do many roles that I had grown up, you know, liking and wanting to do, one of them being the cowgirl in Rodeo. While her dancing career was in high gear at the Joffrey, she happened to see a PBS documentary about a former ballet dancer turned teacher. Don't move on six for anything in the world. I first saw this program when there was a documentary made about it called He Makes Me Feel Like Dancing. It was done with such truth and energy and commitment, and it looked to me like not one of them was making a mistake. Step, kick and I sort of tucked it away in the back of my mind, thinking this makes enormous sense, what Jacques is doing. Then in the early 90s, Carol left the Joffrey and moved to California, where she continued to dance. But she never forgot the documentary about Jacques D'Ambois and the National Dance Bob, Bob, Institute. Bob. In 1998, she decided it was time to go to New York, train under Jacques, and bring a dance institute to Southern California. Five, six, 
here she goes. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Can you, can you do Don't be fooled by the fun. The California Dance Institute's techniques are highly there? structured. Some dancers who are, have really resumes that are incredible don't take to this work at all because it's not really about dance. It's about using dance to teach life and learning skills, to teach focus and discipline and energy and commitment, which are skills that you need to do anything in life. Carol will often use children to teach children. Here she goes. Can you do that arm swing? And don't forget the smile. Slow one first. Go. One, two, three. Yes. A bop, 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 bop. Woo! Now. I noticed that she makes you do things by yourself. Like she, she had you demonstrate something all by yourself. Is that kind of scary? Well, sometimes it is, but it builds confidence in us and everything. It really helps us in school and stuff. And none of them are inhibited. But how does she persuade nine and 10 year old boys to dance? It's just a matter of style. Hang on a second. How many do you have to do? The classroom teachers are always like, oh, are the boys gonna do this? Are they gonna dance? I usually have absolutely no trouble with any of the boys. It's very athletic, it's in sneakers. They're stomping, they're punching, they're shouting and um, they really love it. I actually think it's very fun. We get to get out here and have some excess time just having fun. Do guys usually like to dance? Well, if it's cool and nice. And is this cool? Yeah. Five, six, here you go. Front side. A hallmark of the California Dance Institute is the live musical accompaniment provided by pianist Kevin Bowers. Carol and Kevin work together seamlessly. Can you make up something that goes with that, Kevin? Here they go. He's crucial for a number of reasons. One, live music is so important, so many children never hear it anymore. Two, it keeps the children sort of so involved. Today, the children are rehearsing for the big final production at the end of the school year. It will bring more than 250 students from all five schools together on one stage. It is about the process, but it's also that the process leads up to something. We all know about deadlines. At a certain point, this has to be done, and you've got to, you know, hit the stage or hit the interview or do it. At night, I like to hear the music play. But Carol's toughest challenge is raising the money that keeps the California Dance Institute alive, sometimes just barely. It's incredibly difficult to find people that believe in this kind of program that's really about, you know, hard work and it's not real glitzy. I get so much joy out of a 10-year-old finally mastering a simple step. It's, it's the thing, finally, that gave me as much satisfaction as being on stage. Oh, that's so great. And our congratulations to all the children who were part of the California Dance Institute. And that's our program, I'm Val Zavala. For everyone at Life and Times, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.